Hello my fellow gamers, and this is episode 2 of going through all the High Elves goodness, the whole ro roaster breakdown, all their abilities, skills, magic and such. So yes, and this is episode 2, if you haven't seen episode 1, go check that out, that's going through all the spells they have, going into detail. In this episode we're going to go over the Lords and Heroes, and what abilities, upgrades, costs and things like that they have. So, let's start with the Lord. So we start with a Princess, which what I'm going to do just so we can see, is take everything away from her. And you see, basic cost is 1,000 points. See, it's a hybrid weapon infantry. Fancy. So they have anti-infantry and melee expert. As you can see, you've got all the stats here if you want to pause it and have a look. They've got missile resistance of 15%. They encourage, obviously. They can hide and fuss. And they have martial prowess. So I believe this is the thing that everyone has. Um, yeah, it's a constant, and if their hit point is less, ah, uh, disabled of have less than 50%. So while they have that, they have plus 12 melee defense and plus 2 melee attack. Very nice. You then have, what things can they get? Well, they're thousands, you've got all their abilities there. You can then give them an elven steed for 100 gold. You can get them a great eagle for 500, a moon dragon for 1,100, and a Star Dragon for 1,500. Very nice. You also have abilities. They have the Loose, which is a constant that affects themselves and allies within 40 minutes, which ups the reload skill by 10. So you can have a load of archers, have her sat at the back, and I believe she has a bow and arrow as well, I would have thought, and they can be shooting away um, with that buff. So that's really nice. You then have... Sorry, that costs 78 gold. I should remember to say that. For 80 gold, you can give them Foe Seeker, the old classic. And for 159, you can give them Volley of High Arrows. So it's a magic missiles. Enemy within 200. Um, causes armor piercing damage. Good penetration, effective at long range, which is very, very nice. Um, Yes, so I was just distracted by the quote, but which unexpected sour point of death rains down upon the unfortunate target? Ouch. That's nice. So she's definitely, like, if you want a more archer army, do you want that? No spells. Um, items, she can take the talisman of lock, which is a argument she can do on herself, which ups the melee attack by 26 and the weapon damage by a full quarter, 25%, for a nice cheap cost of 79 coins. For another 79, you can get the dragon horn. Which affects allies in range and herself, and the range is 40 meters, and it ups the weapon damage and the missile damage by 25% each. Damn. And it lasts for 29 seconds, I should probably note that, and that one lasts for 57 seconds, but that's because it just affects herself. But that, that's very, very powerful. So that is the princess. If we now go to the prince, and as before, we'll get to the basic points. Yep, so him basic. Is that everything? Didn't think it was. There we go. So him basic is 1,000 points. Um, he's got armoured and shielded. He's just sword infantry and melee expert. As you can see, he's got the martial powers. He's got the encourage, the missile resistance 15%. He's kind of a shield, can block 55% of all small fire. Um, for 200 coins, you can have a barbered steed. And it's that fancy metal, Ephraimar. Ilframar, I'm going to mispronounce that so badly, the comments going to hate me. You can have a Great Eagle for 500, a Sun Dragon for 900, and the Star Dragon for 1,500. Very nice. His abilities, um, it's actually quite standard. He has Foe Seeker for 80, Deadly Onslaught for 158, and Stand Your Ground for 162. The items you can take is the Bane Shield, which affects himself and other in range of 40 meters for 50 seconds. Where they get plus armor, 30 armor, and 24 missile parry with shields. So if you've got lots of guards with shields and you're getting shot at, you can use that ability and it'll just buff them all for almost a minute, which is quite good. You can also have the Blade of Bel Kafadis, Kafadras, um, which only affects himself for 161 gold. That's quite steep for something that only affects him. Um, it ups his melee attack by 26 and 20% armor piercing damage. Um, quite interesting. I don't know if that's really worth it for 161, especially when you think that what the princess can get for probably this. Anyway, so we'll move on to the next lord, which is the good old famous Tyrion. We'll get rid of all their abilities. Yep. 
So he's basic 1400. He's armoured, melee expert and duelist as you can imagine. He's got all the same powers as before. Um, he can take his elven steed. Ma Malhandia. You know what? I'm not going to get these names. They're elven names. They're sickening. These are just a step, slight step up from wood elves. We know how I feel about wood elves. So yeah, he can have a special steed for 200. His abilities are stand your ground for 162 coins. And for 161, you can give him faint and respond, um, which affects himself for 31 seconds. Ups his melee defense by 27, his physical resistance by 22%, and his melee attack by 26. So, quite nice. Um, he also has a couple of items. He can have the Heart of Avalon, which is a constant on himself. Um, and apparently a burst of life-saving hit points. Ah, see. So, it's to say he would have hit points are greater than 10%. So, as soon as he drops below 10%, this thing kicks in um, and regenerates him pretty much. Um, but it's 259 for that little buff. So, quite costly, but it might be worth it to keep him alive. He also has the Sun Fang, which um, has the ability to do a breath attack for 100 meters, causes magical and fire damage, can disrupt an enemy for formation, and expand in tear shape, strong versus mobile units, as you can imagine. Um, lasts for the yeah, 17 seconds, and that's 245, so that's quite powerful. But that, I believe, is his sword that actually does that. And I think it was saying you can only use it twice as well. I think that circle thing means you can only use it twice. So that's quite a lot. That's over 100 per breath attack. Is it worth it? Have to see. Do you want to check something? Okay, no, just as four. So the first, the final one is Tertius. We get rid of everything. So you can see how much he is basic. And we get to see the cost of all his spells and abilities. Also, it needs to be pointed out, he has his own set of magic. So maybe we should go through that first. So as you can see on the side here, he takes a bit of everything. So his basic spore is from the Raw Beast, the Flock of Doom. You've then got the Law of Light, the Nut of Amatok, which is, as we know, great for the Empire and position. So if you imagine the High Elves being able to do that, that would be awful being able to just pin people in and then shoot them. Um, he's then got the Law of Shadows, Enfeeble Foe. He's then finally got Law of Life for regrowth. So he's got can debuff, make steel, do thy damage, regrow health. He's got the Flaming Sword of Ruin from Law of Fire, which buffs the attack of the units around him. And a nice big damage of Law of Heavens, a chain of whitening. So this guy's got a beautiful mix. And it makes sense. This guy knows all of the spells and he would take all the best ones. So you've got big damage, little damage, paralyze, weaken, regrow, and extra damage very very nice um so he can take his mount the barbered steed oh, i should probably go over as well that he's a spellcaster and he's got the usual missile resistance and all that there's his stats so yeah he can take a steed for 250 without abilities look at this this guy's insane i'd like to point out basic he's 450 <laughs> that's cheaper than a unit of spearmen i love it so anyway yeah steed for 250 his abilities so he can have the kindle flame so plus 22 weakness to fire damage matt right yep yeah. so if he's doing fire damage well actually no he's got the ability to give his allies fire damage hasn't he using the flaming sword that costs 88 gold to use he's then got the wild heart so increased to power reserves and improved power recharge rate for 80 again really nice one the sealed of sapphire is a map ride ability um, and it's a plus 11 percent damage resistance not hang on I'm trying to hang on so it's constant um, around self affects allies in range active if uh, casting so if he casts an ability um, he then does that thing but it affects the map wide so everyone gets plus 11 damage resistance on his side he's also got the greater arcane conduct He's then got the potion of Shawio. Um, pretty much regeneration for 90 sec seconds. It replenishes hit points of combatants and raises damage resistance by 44%. But it does add 30 to the ability to recharge. Mm. So, yeah, kind of a last ditch if you need it. And Kane's Ring of Fury, 
which is a wind attack, causes magical damage, large area effect, strong versus multiple units. You need 237 there. And again, you can only use it twice. Um, yeah, and that one's 82, and that's 242, but normally a standard for everyone to take. So we've gone through, obviously, the spells. The Net of Antioch is 161, Chain Lightning 245, the Flaming Sword is 158, the Enfeebled Info is 82, the Flock of Doom is 76, and the Regrowth is 242. So as you can imagine, he gets expensive fast when you use these abilities. He's also got a couple of items he can have. He can have the Scroll of Hoth, which is a Hex of the Winds. It affects the enemy within 100 meters, lasts for 32 seconds, and it greatly reduces the power recharge rate. Um, and 30% um, 30 points more on the ability recharge so if you did that on say a wizard or a character a really important character he could mess him up very nice he also has the saw of tetherless funny that being it's him um, affects himself 41 seconds um, he gets weapon damage plus 60% melee attack 44 and the armor piercing goes up by 60% Wow, so for 240, but that is powerful. That would just cut through anything, and that's 242 as well. So you can imagine, if you tech this guy up, he's 450. Let's give him everything. And we um, There you go. The, he was 450, weren't he? So he's nearly 2,000 points more <laughs> with everything. That is a bit insane. But there we go. So what we're going to do now is we'll go over the um, heroes. So we have the High Mage, who, as you can imagine, is a spellcaster. They can take a Elven Steed or a Chariot, which is very, very nice. They also have the Sealed of Sapphire. So again, if you had a few mages all using this ability, that is huge. I, I, was, I wonder if they stack. Maybe. Maybe, but that only costs 80 for them to use. Spells, as you can imagine, this is the uh, high law. So they're all the spells um, that we've already covered. So it's 78 for the healing one. 82 for the hand of glory, where it does reload speed and melee attack. 161 for the magic missile. 165 for the vortex, which catches flying. 242 for the um, weakening the ability. Seeing that, well, it does damage as well, doesn't it? And the Fiery Phoenix one is 237. Very nice. And it's their items is the Book of Health, which greatly improves power recharge rate. And the Star Wood, Star Wood Staff, which greatly increases power reserve. So if you had a couple of these, if you went for a very magic heavy army, they would be so devastating, purely because of the amount of recharge and power reserves you could bring to the field. It's very, very nice. You then have a Mage of Life, which I reckon is going to be very similar to the Chariot, the Catherine. Um, they do have Life Bloom. So, with plenty of hit points of combatants, um, map wide, apparently. Whenever triggers when casting the spell, adds hit points. That's really, really nice. Obviously, they've got the Awakening of the Wood for 82, the Earth Blood for 76, Flesh of the Stone for 158, Shield of Thorns, 164 gold. Regrow for 242 and the weather's below 243. You also have the two same items where the book that great does the power recharge is 158 and the staff wood star wood staff greatly increased the power reserves for 158. So they're quite similar. And I suspect the mage of life is exactly the same, so watch his exorcism. Um, when cast a map wide, any undead um, lose 8 leadership for 80 go. That is worth it. That's very good if you're up against the undead. The spells. So they've got fast protection for 82. The Sem's burning gaze for 85. The light of battle for 160. The net of Amatok for 161. And the banishment for 245. And finally... Bonus Time Warp for 236, and I believe they have the exact same items, yeah, for 158 and 158. Um, I believe that's all of the magic guys done, so we'll move over to the Noble now. Nice to have something a bit different. Um, armored, Armor Pierce, and Anti-Large Charge Defense Against Larger Foes. Really interesting that they have that. Uh, magic um, Damage, Missile Resistance 15%, Martial Powers, yeah, same thing. So... Mounts, 
he's base 750 basic. He can have a Barbed Steed for 200. He can have a Great Eagle 350 or a Chariot for 450. His abilities are Foe Seeker and Deadly Onslaught. One for 158, the other one for 80. Has no spat powers, but he can get the Sacred Incense, which is constant, affects allies in range of 40 minutes, and it raises 12% missile resistance. Um... Wow, okay then, so that is a general ward effect that is constant. Nice. For 82, that'll probably be worth it. Um, an arm of the stars. Um, hiding. Mm. So, ah, I see, okay then. So it lasts for 38 seconds. It targets itself. Target is hidden, affected from flanking, stalked, spotted on it. So, for 158, that's the same thing as Skittle Leap that the Skaven have as the spell he can have to himself. Um... Now, am I right thinking, yeah, I guess the reason you'd have that, I'm thinking on foot wouldn't do very much. No, but what say if they're on a great eagle, and they have that, and they just disappear, and then suddenly they appear as they're charging you, or your war machine, or something like that. Um, I mean, what's the duration? 38 seconds, but you could do a lot of damage with that. Very nice. Finally, this guy, Lord Master, he cost a thousand basic, he spellcasted armor. Armor piercing and anti infantry. He also has a bronze shield, so that though is twenty percent of the small arms fire. But um he's got his own spells. So his first one is the Law of Beasts, the Russian's Wild Form. He's then got the Law of Light, Sham's Burning Gaze. Law of Shadows, Molokov's Masterfine Mirisma. The Law of Life, Earth Blood, the Law of Heaven, Harmonic. Convergence and the Lord of Death Spirit Lead. So he's got a lot of other buffs, regens, or um, direct damage, uh, which is absolutely good. I think it's great that you can get a normal hero that's got a nice mix of abilities there. It's not just stuck on one law, and it makes sense that the high elves are the ones to do it. So, with that in mind, let's go over. He can't have any mounts ever, but he has abilities. He can have Evasion for 81. Where his me melee defense goes up by 5 and his speed is 6%. And of course, class of Foe Seeker for 80. Spells we've already gone through, but Shum's Burning Gaze is 85. Harmonic Convergence for 82. The Spirit Leech for 78. The Markov's Masterfair Mirisma at 78. The Worsen Wild Form at 79. And Earth Blood at 76. So all his abilities are really cheap, actually. What's the most expensive? 85? I think his most expensive spell was only 85 gold, and that's the direct damage one. So, that is really good. And the fact that he's quite good in combat as well. I could see him coming up quite a bit, actually. He also has the Lawmaster's Cloak. Um, which, oh, affects him and anyone within 40 minutes. Minutes? Meters. 22% more to magic resistance for 164. That probably would be worth it. Especially if you're against a Slan or other High Elves or Dark Elves or something like that with magic would be really good. Um, and Blessed Tome. It affects allies within 30 meters and himself and ups the leadership permanently by 8 for 158. That's quite good. If you add that with other buffs doing the leadership, it'll make you nearly unbreakable. So there we go, that is all the High Elves, Lords and Heroes. In the next episode I'll be going over the infantry, both um, melee and missile. As you can see they've only got eight, so I should be able to cover that quite quickly. I uh, thank you all for joining me, and I hope to see you next time. Till then, take care.